Okay, well, let's get started here. Hang on one second. Okay, so what we're going to go over, and if you have any questions, feel free to pop in whenever you want to. We have a lot to cover. Um, I just wanted to go over some really important things about spell check. And uh, a lot of the assignments that we're doing has to deal with uh, Grammarly um, and spell check. Now, this is this event, uh, this class is open up to uh, three different universities. And they asked me actually to do these, this presentation on how to set up your spell check correctly. Uh, more importantly, how to use spell check properly. Um, and is spell check the best option? And then there's a ton of questions about Grammarly. Now, we'll go into the details on Grammarly and I'll show you not how to set it up, but kind of how to use it and the pros and the cons um, to using Grammarly. Now, if I move too quick, um, I think you can flag, I think you can send me a message, maybe. Um, you can send me a message and I can slow it down. I don't see my little message box. Yay for technology here. Yeah, I could open up my chat. There we go. I'll keep my chat open. So if you um, want to send a message or if uh, I'm going too fast, just send me a note that says, hey, slow down. Or um, <laughs> or can you explain this a, a different way than I will? All right. So the very first thing we're going to go, and uh, some of you guys have seen me do this before, is actually set up spell check. Now, spell check, when it comes standard on your computer, is not set up correctly. It needs a little bit of fine tuning to be able to catch the mistakes that most people make. Uh, more importantly, it needs a little bit of fine tuning to meet APA standards. Or if you have, uh, if you're in law, in, in law classes, then the legal standards. Um, so how you're going to set up spell check is you're going to go to file, and then we're going to go all the way down to options so file and options and that's going to give you this uh, box right here now uh, i'm recording this so if you want to re-watch it and especially if you have two computers two monitors it makes it a lot easier you could put the directions on one and then uh, actually follow along with the other ones now my computer is set up for uh, what I need it to do, but I'll, I'll show you exactly what to set up and what boxes to check. So this gives you to the general word options and you have general display, proofing, all of this other stuff. We only need proofing. You go down to, to proofing generally when um, I actually, I think with this last update, they uncheck this, but it says ignore words in uppercase. This is a big one in, in uh, law enforcement and police report writing who still, uh, a lot of them still uh, choose to write in all caps. That's not really acceptable anymore um, because there's a lot of issues with spelling and grammar and, and spell check not catching it. Uh, so go ahead and put ignore, uncheck that, ignore uh, words in uppercase. Now in APA and legal formatting, the only times you'll use uppercase is sometimes with headings depending on the style of paper that you're doing. Um, all these should be ignore words that contain numbers. Uh, I would probably uncheck that. Uh, ignore internet and file addresses. I'll just, uh, just ignore that because that's, that's going to flag a lot of things that you don't need flagged. Um, unless your style guide requires you to shorten your URL, um, just leave that on, just leave that checked. Okay, uh, this is goes to French modes, but it's typically set to traditional spelling, but put traditional on new spellings because it's going to give you a little bit better options. Now down here is the most important. So check spelling as you type. I like to do that. A lot of the professional writers absolutely do not do that. Um, they'd like to do it as they go. Uh, there's benefits and pros to, or pros and cons to keeping that box checked. That's entirely up to you. Mark grammar. Errors as you type, same thing. I just keep all these checked. Now, one of the most important things that you can do as a writer, um, either professional or APA college or university level writing, is click this button and it's show readability statistics. Now, I'll teach an entirely different class 
just on the readability statistics and the importance of using this readability statistics. Um, it is that important and it doesn't come checked, so make sure you check it. And it goes over the flesh reading scale. I actually have three books up and over there um, just on the flesh reading scale. Um, so it is that important. Um, writing style, this will typically be set to grammar, but go ahead and, and set it to grammar and refinements. So grammar and refinements, and then this is all set. When you push OK, it's going to save everything, but you don't have to push OK yet. Go ahead and get into the settings section. This is where I wish I could enlarge this. I'll enlarge it on the on the uh, on the recorded video after I do some editing. I'll I'll enlarge it for you so you can see. Now a lot of these here, I'll I'll do reset all. There you go. I'll reset all, and then we'll go over it. Um, we'll go over what you need checked. Now, on the grammar section, go ahead, and you kind of scan through these. You don't have to know what any of these mean or all of them mean. What, what these do is they flag your paper. So whenever your paper is flagged, it's just an indicator like, hey, I need to slow down, or I might need to check something here. You don't have to ch change it at all. It's just an indicator on it's an indicator on things that you may need to check or rephrase. So grammar, and I'll keep all of these. Agreement with a noun phrase. Um, yeah, might as well just keep that. Not that important. Comma splice, very important. So a lot of the new updates, so the new Windows update that uh, came out a few months ago, uh, they updated a lot of the spell check issues that I've been complaining about. And also they are uh, really doing a better job and that's to be able to compete with uh, companies like Grammarly. Uh, it'll, so Word has upped, upped up their game. Um, anyways, so let's go on. Incorrect use of that. Absolutely check that because this, everyone uh, uses too many that's uh, in their in their writing. Even I do. Uh, I don't. I don't catch a lot of those. That's why I have a good editor that can catch some of the ones that uh, that I miss. So missing missing end punctuation. See how this one's not marked for some reason. Go ahead and and press it. Now you're gonna be like, wow, that's a lot. Well, it's not gonna. It's gonna flag quite a bit, um, but you'll be surprised on how little it actually does flag even though these are all things that it's checking all right word okay clarity this is very important this section pay attention <laughs> all right if, if i could uh um I, I can't stress this enough professional or academic this is your this is your bad boy your baby right here that you need to pay attention to um go ahead and click double negation you don't need to know what that means just click it uh jargon if you are uh, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second, uh, about jargon and sex-based uh, words. Okay, this is how this is how you find your passive voice. So if you're in my classes, I harp on passive voice and using pa passive voice um, correctly. And I actually, I've written several articles on passive voice and active voice. Um, it's, it's super important, but it's kind of hard to catch if you're not paying attention or if you're running short on time like most of us especially in academic land, um, you, you might not pay attention to uh, every single type, every, type, every single time that you use passive voice. So this is how you catch it. You, you put passive voice and passive voice with unknown actor. Whenever it flags that, try to rephrase your sentence into an active voice sentence. Once again, I'll send out a video or we'll do some active voice stuff together uh, in, a later, in a later video. Um, simpler wording. Yeah, you could put this. This is actually new this year. Simpler wording. Um, if the professional writing students, the, you know, the whole point of your writing is to make it as clear and concise as possible. Uh, so if you have convoluted or very big, gigantic words and you could shrink them down, that's a pro. That's a big pro. And even in the academic land, the whole point is not to use big words. It's to use the right words. No matter what your professor says, um, about vocabulary. It's really, truly about using the right 
word. So don't fall in that trap of, hey, I have to try to find the biggest word possible. Um, it's using the correct word in the right place. Um, whether versus if, I, I don't really have an issue with that. So if you want to keep it um, or if you want to press these two verb number with the collective noun, I don't need it. Um, incisiveness. You know, you could use, this is another new one, conjunction overuse. I don't know what it's going to catch. Uh, words expressing uncertainty. Uh, that's important if you are writing um, an opinionated paper or um, a personal type uh, paper. You want to pay attention to uncertain words. Okay, formality. Here we go. This is for all the APA students out there, all the university students out there. This is probably your baby, right? So in professional writing, you have the clarity section is one of the most important sections to pay attention in academic. This section, formality, is probably one of the most important. Now, as you can see, nothing is checked. That's unacceptable in my eyes because it should be checking all of them. Um, so go ahead. Contractions. Here you go. You should never be using uh, contractions in APA, um, MLA, AP format. Well, AP formatting allows it. Um, but standard APA formatting and MLA formatting do not allow contractions, so don't use them. This is a, the part where you get them flagged, right? So this is this is what flags all those contractions, so you don't get docked those points for using contractions. Now, in professional writing, you absolutely use contractions. It's a hundred percent acceptable. Um, some style guides prevent you from using uh, contractions, so make sure that you pay attention to your style guide. Whatever your college or university is, is uh, let's say making you do, <laughs> um, suggesting that you follow because you need to follow the style guides or in professional land. Uh, if your company has their own style guide, pay attention to their style guide if contractions are allowed. Informal language, very important in academic setting. Uh, opinion markers. So you can put the preposition at the end of uh, end of the clause. Now the preposition at the end of a clause is not uh, grammatically incorrect, uh, even though a lot of your K twelve teachers will teach you that it's not. Uh, in, it, it is incorrect grammar. It is it's hundred percent correct grammar. It's just is it the best way of saying what you want to say? I always put it because I kind of like to rephrase those sentences to better fit what I'm trying to do. Um, slang. Subjective mood, I don't even know what that is too much, but you could put it if you want. Okay, inclusiveness. If you're on the East Coast, uh, New York, New Jersey, or if you're in California and you work in uh, academics over here, this is actually one of the most important sections for you. The reason why is because you can't, you have to have gender, uh, gender neutral pronouns, uh, gender specific language. You have to avoid bias, sexual orientation bias, gender bias, ethnic slurs, you have to avoid all of this. Um, these will flag uh, some biased words that you might have that in your normal vocabulary. So I would go ahead and, and check all of those. Uh, as, once again, especially if you're in those states that require it. Now, New York requires, uh, especially their, their law enforcement um, and their, their academics to use extremely gender neutral pronouns like manhole. Um, is not a manhole, it's a utility uh, utility cover. I believe that's what it is, or utility uh, entrance. Uh, male man is not, it's a male person. So that will flag all of those. Okay, punctuation conventions. I'll put comma with adver uh, ad uh, adverbials. Oxford comma, check that, make sure that's checked. The Oxford comma is that uh, comma, or it's also known as a serial comma at the end of, of, a, of a list. Now, I always use Oxford comma. Professional writers, you need to use uh, the, the Oxford comma. The reason why is because there's a lot of legalities behind comma placement. So you have to be uh, precise in the use of your comma. Now, I always flag it. If I don't need it, then I'll delete it. And there's that gets into a whole nother... Um, class on how to use the Oxford uh, comma correctly. But I always use it because you really do get in the habit of actually using it. Because in an MLA format, they don't really want you to use it. 
in, in the professional world, you you can lose it. And there's a million dollar case it's called the million dollar comma case. If you want to look it up or I'll send a link. Um, it's very fascinating. It's a multi-million dollar case that was lost because of one comma at the end. Um, punctuation required with quotes. And I put, it says, don't check. Always put inside in the United States. So check it. Um, it's inside. And then space between sentences. It is one space, my friends, one space. It is not two spaces, no matter what they say. It is absolutely not two spaces after a period. The reason why is because we're not using typewriters and the typeface on Word automatically spaces it to the correct spacing um, that it should be for whatever font you're using. Um, so if you're used to, and I, I grew up uh, double tapping that, that, that space bar key, Word fixed that about almost, I'll say about eight years ago. And then I believe, don't quote me, I think it was two years ago, they officially came out and said, stop doing it. Um, yeah, stop doing it. it. It's going to, you know, mess up your formatting. They actually came out with a with a with a guide. Word came out, or Microsoft came out with a whole thing that said, "Hey, we automatically set it up um, correctly." So one space, don't put two spaces um, at all, please. You're not on a typewriter. Resume. I don't use any of this stuff because we're not writing a resume. Vocabulary. Uh, Click that profanity. <laughs> um, the reason why is because I have had a lot of profanity in my papers, in my academic papers. Um, so you should be double checking. But once again, if it's your conventional speech, um, you might not, you might overlook it, right? Because it's just a normal word in your vocabulary. Um, so you might overlook it. So it might not be uh, the best word choice in an academic setting, right? Um, local specific words. This is hilarious for my Southern, um, mostly my Southern students. So tech, Texas along all the panhandle and, and, uh, 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 some, I'd say it's mostly my Southerners. Uh, they use very local specific words, um, that I don't understand what they are because they're, they're local. Uh, click that. You can put uh, vague or unnecessary adverbs. Remember, adverbs, adge adjectives uh, are just more along the lines of uh, filler words. All right, so everybody's still with me. Um, go ahead, and we're going to click OK. And that set this up exactly how we want it. Um, that is with Word. And I will show you. Let me move my chat bar and we will go and I will whoops so you go to review and you're going to go to editor we're going to check this paper and I'll show you um, this is a real student paper obviously I took out the name of the student um, but we'll be using this one this example a lot because there's a lot of plagiarism in this one. So you'll see this on my plagiarism examples as well. Um, so we'll go to editor and then you'll see all of these. So spell check, we have four grammar. We have two clarity. We have four. Um, and then formality we have two. Okay. We're not going to really fix those. I'm going to ignore them for right now. So you'll see where it is. Ignore once that should be value. That's fine. That should be scores. We'll just go through this really, really quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I have chosen this article. Probably not the best phrase, right? I have chosen this article. Um, you can say I chose this article. So ignore, ignore. Clarity. This is uh, where a lot of the, you see, in the role of determining is assessed, that is passive voice, right? So you're gonna to have to rephrase that. Ignore, ability, just word choice, right? So it gives you some uh, word choice. Here's your contraction flag. This is what I wanted you to show. This is called the readability st statistics right here. So as this paper reads, 
Um, you have a passive voice of 27%, which is way too high. Um, you should try to keep it around 12% or below with passive, passive voice sentences. Once again, I'll teach another class that is all about the readability statistics. Uh, flesh uh, reading scale is 16 with a reading ease of 35. So if this is not an easy paper to read, um, what it's saying is essentially that every um, uh grade level 16 should be able to read it. And that's kind of high. Um, I want to keep this around 12, um, around 12. And they say even around eight when it comes in, comes to professional writing, but I can't get it down to eight without some serious editing. Um, so I, I'll keep it around 12, no higher than 12. Um, and this will give you all your stats. But once again, we'll teach, well, we'll do another class on just that. Okay, now here is where everybody wants to um know about is grammarly right uh let me go into my new one All right when if you have questions feel free to interject so I know everybody's still awake here. All right, so Grammarly is right here. Um, all right, so Grammarly, go to Grammarly.com. This is what the website uh, looks like. You have just a plain website. Now I'm going to tell you, it, I'm gonna go over the, the paid version, um, the free version and give my opinion on uh, the price because we're going to go into the price plans and you'll look at my account and what I've paid for Grammarly over the years um, and make your determination. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do um, later too. Okay. So this is Grammarly. Uh, it's a, it's a spell check uh, site, grammar and word. It's a pretty much a grammar add on um, to anything that you do. Um, this is a site. So you can go ahead and log in and create your own account. Um, Create your own account. Let me go here. Make sure you guys are seeing this correctly. Okay, so you can create your own account. Let me move my little chat bar over here away. I'll keep my little video over here on this side. All right, so this is the different types of, uh, of uh, plans that Grammarly offers. The free is a spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Uh, premium. It comes with all of these, but look at what we just did. So this is clarity, tone, plagiarism. So plagiarism detection. Um, that this might be, you have to upload it. My guess is that you have to upload it in the system. I've never actually used this at all, ever. Um, I think you do have to upload it into the, into the site. Formality level, fluency. Those are all things that we changed in Word, right? So you're seeing a lot of the stuff that we changed in Word, you're seeing it here um, on Grammarly. And then you have business, which gives you some analytical stuff, a bunch of mumble jumbo that you don't you don't need. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna make you a better writer or any of this crap. Um, premium is the most important and you have free. Now these are cool. The one thing I really love about Grammarly is you can install it across all your platforms, all your Microsoft accounts, and then you have it. Um, for your discussion questions if you're in school uh this will even attach to your discussion question posts so when you're writing uh when you're writing it will actually save and help you on your discussion questions or chats uh that is a really really cool feature and that's available free uh with the free account the premium account uh, includes all this other stuff um right here but once again this is the, these are the different accounts. Now look at the pricing, the pricing. Let me get into my personal account. I'll get into my personal account. So when you log in here, when you log in, this is what you see. Now there's two different ways of doing it. You can do the attachment, which we're gonna go over really quick, or the, the add-on um, through, computer's almost dying. 
One second. All right, I'm back. All right, so there we go. I thought it was plugged in. Um, we'll go to the, the add-in on Word. We'll use that. I'll show you. And then, or you can also upload it directly into, um, into Grammarly system. This is where you'll get that uh, plagiarism checker. Most universities have a plagiarism checker, so just use their, you just use the universities. All right, so this is what it looks like. Move my picture. Yeah, and then support and log out. Okay, I'll go into my account. You'll see exactly what's in my account, why I'm mad at uh, Grammarly. Um, I use this, account settings, customization. What is this? Oh, you can personalize your dictionary, but you could do the same thing in Word, right? So you can add words that are um, unique to your industry, uh, but Word also does the same thing. Okay, here's a subscription. I am a premium member. This is why I am so upset with Grammarly and their customer service is not the best and it's driving me actually um, away from Grammarly as a whole. I wish they would have better customer service and be more, uh, they would be, let's say more, more understanding that their, their service is very expensive um, and they, they definitely don't care. Um, so I'm working with them. So hopefully I might even be able to get a subscription discount for all the students in my class. I am working with it well, with Grammarly, um, but it's not going very well. This is what I've paid over the years, right? So in October 31st of 2017, I actually had a $76. They raised it from $76 all the way to, it was only like, at the time it was only like 80 something dollars, but still that was really expensive. Um, so I complained and they did drop it. Did They did a one-time courtesy fee reduction and they dropped it to 69.98. And now look at how much they're charging, $139.95 a year. Um, and that's what I've been paying. That is a ton of money for a service like this. Uh, that, that, that is, and I'm a professional writer and I use Grammarly, uh, but I also use a bunch of other features and I really don't rely heavily on, on Grammarly. Um, the free features of Grammarly are sufficient for what, um, for what I need. So that $139.95, that for me is way, 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 way too much. Um, if they could get it down to the $70 range, uh, or the $60 range, that's more like it. The $80 was way too much. I don't know. I don't, I think it's because it's on automatic uh, uh, renewals that I didn't pay attention to that, but I'm not going to pay $139. It's all up to you though on what you want. Um, all right, now let's look at what it actually does. Okay, if you need me to slow down, just let me know. Um, I know it's been 30 minutes. We'll try to hurry it up. So, I can get everybody along their way. I wanted to keep this under 45 total, and we're right there. All right, so Grammarly, you add it on as an as a add-in. So um, you install it. It is very, very simple to install. And they actually install a separate Grammarly tab, um, and that's kind of nice. Oops. So let me move my chat out of the way. Now you're going to see a lot more stuff flagged. Dang video. All right. So you're going to see a lot more uh, items flagged here. So comma placements. Um, but once again, it, it's interesting with um, spell check because you could you can run it through spell check, save it, exit out, open it up, and then run it through spell check again, and it might actually show more uh, more mistakes, but Grammarly is good. So the free version will give you a lot of this stuff, not, not the clarity. So this is, this will be the paid, but I have chose this, this is all horrible, right? But if you fix it using spell check, you'll see that it's, um, you could catch most of your mistakes and look at this and its effects. 
So the effects it had, right? So you're working on simplifying your sentences. So if you go into line editing or if you actually read your sentences out loud, you could figure out a lot of these same things. Hospitals come up with. So this is a bad phrase. So come up with, so develop, I like that. So I like that in the sense that the paid version will give you a lot of these clarity ones where the, the free version doesn't. Um, it flags this whole thing, right? Because this whole thing is one sentence. And that's why it's, oh, I'm sorry, it's two sentences. Um, that's why it's kind of hard to read. So it gives you suggestions. This is the paid version. We'll give you suggestions. Um, grammar, all the red ones, all the red ones, uh, I think it's all the, what, yeah. All the red ones are free with the free version. Those are grammar and spelling. So look at this, it, it did catch this one and uh, Microsoft spell checked it. And, and the K, in this case, this should be a comma. I could put in the case, yeah. In the case of COVID-19, in this case of COVID-19. Well, it depends. Yeah, I'll just keep that. Early detection is important. Uh, as it can, we can say, see as it can. So you can put to reduce the community. So it does catch a lot more, um, as you can see, but is it really worth $140 a year? Uh, you be the judge on that. Uh, Grammarly has been updating their system along with uh, Microsoft Word. It's my hope that Microsoft Word will take a lot of the AI integration from Grammarly um, and develop spell check um, to more better compete with Grammarly. Now they are, their, their spell check, uh, Microsoft Office's spell check has really improved over the years. Uh, and, and that's actually pretty I actually, over the past like three years, it's, it's really, really improved. All right, so this is Grammarly. As you can see, it caught a lot more things. Um, but once again, they're flagging a lot more. Now, are you going to change everything that they flagged? Absolutely not, and don't do that. Um, I've seen students, I've seen professionals that literally will fix everything that Grammarly uh, recommends, and it is an absolute disaster. Um, just because it's recommending something does not mean it's right. It, does not mean that you should actually um, change it. So that's Grammarly. Now, one other thing really before we go, I want to show you this. Now, I use a mix of everything. So I use a mix of uh, Microsoft Office. I use Grammarly. Um, I really like Grammarly, the free version, because it does attach to your discussion questions um, and a lot of the side things that you do outside of Word. Um, that's one thing I really like about Grammarly. I just hate that price. That price is just too much for, um, for what you get, in my opinion. Um, all right. So this is another one that I use. It's called Style Writer. This is more for professional writers, um, plain English uh, enthusiasts. I'll save this. Oops, I probably shouldn't have saved it, but it's okay. And this is what you see. Whoops, let me shrink it down. It is way more analytical. This is not a, a, a subscription service. This is a one-time fee service, which I love. Um, and this gives you everything and a lot more than what Grammarly does. It's highly analytical. This one is, it tells you about, look at stakeholders, um, uh, your bog index, your style index. This is this is what a lot of the professional writers use is the style writer. So it's actually worth, in my opinion, this one is actually worth buying. Um, I'm, I don't have any affiliation with them. Uh, I've was recommended this by some of my professional writers in the in the government world, um, and this this system works really good. So see dreadful bog index. How easy is it to read? This is all about readability. Um, this program, it gives you, it flags, um, it, it flags a whole bunch of, like it's same thing with spellings, um, whole bunch of, um, different words that bog down your paper as well as see, I caught that. That's also, um, let's see. 
inform. They recommend it to um, inform to tell. And then they look at this it's so it flags it's so you, you spell check and grammar really didn't even check this the lies in its ability so it flags it to make you make sure you understand which one you're actually used belonging to or it is or it has right so i really like style writer um it's definitely a learning curve and it's an additional uh it's definitely a learning curve um but if you are early off in your academic career if you are in um financial writing get this absolutely get this this will teach you how to break down complicated sentences into easy to read chunks so style writer is a plus in my eyes it doesn't catch everything just like everything else but if you use it in conjunction with everything um you'll be really good once again i use everything so i use style guide grammarly and spell check on all of my uh all of my documents and i have the luxury of actually sending it off to an editor who who also catches more mistakes right um that's why you have an editor but most of us don't especially in the academic world we do not all right so that is it for my presentation does anybody have let me open this up a little bit does anybody have any questions? Nothing, everything makes perfect sense. Can I get like a thumbs up or something? <laughs> All right, well, I hope everybody enjoyed this presentation. Now, once again, I don't recommend, I do recommend getting the free version of Grammarly. Um, and if they have a trial for the premium, absolutely get that. You, As a student, you could kind of finagle them into giving you a discount. Um, but as a professional, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of on your own. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to get a discount. Um, I wish they would, but they don't. Uh, I would, I would definitely do the free version. I would definitely set up your spell check correctly. And then, uh, um, fiddle around you could do the the style writer has a pre i think it might be a month free uh download it and and figure out if you like it i i really enjoy it i think it's really good for professional writing but all right if nobody has any questions we'll uh we'll get out of here thank you everybody for listening and for not falling asleep let me get in here um i wish everybody a happy well not happy birthday what's coming up Oh, it's in September, so we don't have any <laughs> we don't have any uh, holidays until uh, Thanksgiving. But uh, I, I wish everybody a happy week, a safe week. And if you're in Arizona and you're burning up, um, stay cool and drink a lot of water. So take care. If you guys ever need anything, please let me know. And I'm always here to help.